your girl Jay and today I'm here with my January wrap up for 2020. I had a very busy month this month so I actually only finished three books and I'm pretty sure all three were before January 6th when my placement started for Teachers College. So without further ado, let us get started. <sighs> the first book that I picked up was The Whisper Man by Alex North. I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. After the death of his wife, Tom Kennedy, and his young son, Jake, decide to move to the town of Featherbank for a new start. They soon find out that the town of Featherbank has a bit of a history. A man named Frank Carter abducted five children from their homes by whispering through their windows before he ultimately murdered them. The fear of the Whisper Man ran wild until Frank Carter was arrested and the town grew peaceful again. When another little boy in town disappears in a way that is similar to the Whisper Man, talk about the Whisper Man having a, an accomplice outside of prison begins. It's up to two detectives to solve the mystery behind this new disappearance before another little boy goes missing, and that's when Jake begins to hear the whispers. I did enjoy this book, but it wasn't anything that like blew me out of the water. It was very slow slow to begin. It took a very long time for twists and turns to actually start happening, but once they did, I did become invested in the story. I did like the alternating perspectives in the book. We got different viewpoints from Tom, Jake, D.I., Pete, and the killer, which I thought was a pretty cool aspect of the story that we got to see through so many different characters' eyes. I also liked how the book was split into six different parts. I think that it split the story up very nicely. I also really loved the complicated father-son relationships in the book and how it was actually explored through multiple different pathways. I was also surprised by the supernatural elements of the book. I definitely did not see that coming before it happened, so that was a nice surprise. Overall, it was pretty average, but it was still enjoyable while I read it, so check it out if you're interested. The next book that I have is The Arrangement by Robin Harding, and I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars. I really liked it. It follows a young art student named Natalie who has been struggling financially for a while. She then discovers a website where rich older men can sponsor younger attractive females. Nat ends up entering an arrangement with a man who's 30 years her senior named Gabe and she instantly falls in love. She thinks that he feels the same way until he abruptly cuts her off in order to be with his family. Nat begins heavily drinking, spiraling out of control. She refuses to let Gabe go and threatens to ruin his reputation. Gabe refuses to let his sugar baby ruin his life and that's when a body is discovered outside Gabe's apartment and Nat's entire world falls apart. I knew I was going to like this book, but I didn't think I was going to like it as much as I did. I listened to it on audiobook, so being able to hear Nat's emotions and everything that she was going through really bumped the rating up for me. Right from the prologue, I was instantly hooked in the story. I really love how short the chapters are, and they all have headings or like titles that make you want to read the chapter because you want to know what the heck it means. The book is extremely fast-paced and addictive. I read it in two sittings and it's like not that small of a book but you just have to keep reading and that was a train wreck and you knew that her life was going to end in a disaster. You knew that she was just going to keep like messing up but you had to keep reading to see the train wreck. I honestly couldn't decide whether I liked her or hated her it was like a roller coaster of emotions when it came to her. Gabe was a terrible man. He was definitely manipulative and deceitful and it was actually really interesting to get some chapters from his perspective because you could see that he like genuinely thought that what he was doing was totally acceptable and the way that he treated people was totally fine. So it was just kind of cool, well not cool, but like interesting to see from his perspective. I just really loved how both of these characters weren't exactly likable and so you didn't really know who you wanted to root for the entire time. I loved the blurring of relationships and how you couldn't really tell if Gabe was falling for Nat or not or if it was all an act, like I honestly could not tell for half the time. I know that a lot of people complain about the ending and that it wrapped up way too easily and nicely with a little bow on top, but personally I think that it worked out pretty well. I liked the ending. I had a totally different person in mind who I thought was the killer, so I was really excited that I didn't guess correctly. Overall, honestly, this is probably one of my new favorite books. 
I thought it was super addictive and a fun, fast-paced read, so definitely check it out if you're interested. And then the final book that I read was Slay by Brittany Morris. I ended up giving this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. It follows 17-year-old Kira Johnson, who lives a bit of a double life. During the day, she is a math tutor and one of the only three black students at Jefferson High, but by night, she is a game developer of a game made specifically for the black community called Slay. A lot of her family and friends, including her boyfriend Malcolm, think that slay is a waste of time. But then the murder of a teen over a real-life slay dispute hits mainstream media and people begin to have an uproar about the game and decide to label it racist. So now, with the threat of a lawsuit over her head, Kira needs to decide as the game developer to either step forward and discuss what happened or stay silent and it's like the story of that. The book is getting a lot of hype and it's definitely deserved. I'm obviously not the target audience for this book but I do think that everybody should read it because it can open a lot of people's eyes on issues that are going on in the real world. I also think that a lot of people will see themselves in this book but since I am not the target audience I can't speak for the representation so I would definitely recommend checking out some own voices reviews views for this one to get a better understanding of what it's all about. I think that there's so many topics that are explored in this book like race and identity and just relationships in general. I wish there was a game like Slay for those who need it because I think that it would be a super fun community to be a part of. I really liked how there was chapters in the real world but then also within the game. I think that that was a cool aspect to throw in because you were able to like picture what the game looked like and how to play and it just seemed like a really fun time. I also really enjoyed the characters in this book. I think that Kira and her sister Steph were great. I loved following their day-to-day -day life through Jefferson. I just really liked watching their sisterly bond grow throughout the story. I also really liked that we got chapters from different perspectives. I really loved the chapters from Cicada and I was instantly drawn into her charm and just her whole like personality just made me so happy. I think the chapters from different Slay members really helped show what this community Community did for people and I think that it really helped show the impact that this video game had. The ending of the book also definitely threw me off because I was not expecting that outcome but it worked so well for the story. The only like complaint I have about the book isn't really a complaint it's just like my own personal thing. My brother works in video game design so I've heard him talk about stuff before and just the whole concept of two young girls creating a game to this magnitude is impossible so because I have a bit of the background knowledge in that aspect I was kind of like really this is dumb this would never happen but also like it's a fictional story so I need to shut up you know but overall I definitely recommend checking this out it is definitely worth all the hype that it's getting so check it out. Alright everybody, so that was my January wrap up for 2020. Only three books which is weird for me because I'm so used to reading like 10 to 20 books a month. Next month I'm off of my placement so there will definitely be a lot more reading getting done. Thank the lord because I have missed it a lot. So let me know down below a couple of books that you read this month and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!